Just getting right into my thoughts on the DLC, the art design is an 11 out of 10. It was one of the one components that I wasn't worried about because I knew it was going to be so amazing, and it is. I couldn't be happier with how the world looks and the art design and direction, they just knocked it out of the park. The size of the DLC was bigger than I thought it would be. In interview, Miyazaki said it would be about the size of Limgrave from the base game, and while the actual size is about accurate, it's so much denser than Limgrave. The map's layout and attention to verticality feels very reminiscent of something like Dark Souls 1, where the majority of the map is laid over itself and you spend plenty of time of either going up or down. A very interesting design choice that is cool and gives you plenty of time to take in your surroundings, but it does come with its share of minor frustrations which we'll get into later. In terms of playtime, my first full run through of the DLC clocked in at about 35 hours, which I think is average, but honestly, the second half of the DLC was kind of me crit pathing towards bosses and fragments to level up. Which brings up the new DLC only mechanic. In the world there are shadow tree fragments that you will come across which when used levels you up so you deal more damage and take less damage in general. It's from software's answer to people potentially being very high leveled, traveled and rolling through the DLC. Now the difficulty primarily comes from collecting and using these fragments. There's also another item called the Revered Spirit Ash, which levels up both your summons as well as Torrent for some buffs. But if you find yourself struggling in a certain area or against a certain boss, you might just need to go explore and find more fragments. It only takes about another level or two, and you'll notice a significant difference in how fights turn out. This mechanic is borrowed from one of their other games, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, in which by fighting and defeating bosses as well as exploring the world, you will unlock new items to make you more powerful but you will only be able to get so powerful in that game depending on where you are. There is no real way to over level in Sekiro, and that's the big difference in Elden Ring. With enough exploring and some time, you can get your fragment level to a point where the DLC feels respectful, especially at the start. On top of that, FromSoft did a patch to buff the early fragment levels and make it feel better to be at a lower level. But personally, there is one major flaw with this system. Some might disagree and that's okay, but not being able to keep track of which shadow tree fragments you have found in the world feels kind of like an oversight to me. And when I say keep track, I mean an in-game way. Sure, if I had the foresight to know that there are 50 and only 50 fragments in the DLC and that you need all of them to hit max fragment level, I might have kept the log. But now, if I want to hit max level, I need to go back and meticulously find every single location on the map. Sure, some are easier to remember than others, most likely you've seen all of the crosses around the world and each comes with a fragment. But other than that, it's challenging and a frustrating way to want to hit max fragment level, and not entirely fun teleporting around to a very specific location across the map to see if there's an item drop where the map says there is. Some non-respawning enemies also have fragments when they're defeated, so again, another few are easy to remember, but it's still kind of a chore nonetheless. The map itself is incredibly dense and varied with more locations than I ever would have guessed. Like I mentioned earlier, it's much more vertical than the lands between without the use of any kind of underground section like the base game had. With so many wild and varied locations with their own ecosystems, landscapes, and terrain, all being under the guise of the Shadow Tree. And while it's very pretty to look at, and many of the locations have wonderful views and opportunities to take in the game's beauty, I found myself becoming once again frustrated at times while trying to navigate the map and find some of the more hidden away areas of the DLC. The topography of the map feels incorrect when looking at it. Granted, I, I know it's not they made it, but comparing it to many different little nooks and crannies and slopes in the base game's map, it's much more difficult to get where you want to go. The altitude differences also play a very large role in this, but for the most part, navigating to most critical points of the map are a non-issue, luckily. It's honestly more of an annoying two of the map fragments are that you have to acquire, namely the one in the Cerulean Coast down south and the other up north in the Rauri ruins. Again, a beautiful area, but fundamentally confusing to navigate your first time going through it. Something else I noticed in the DLC is that there are barely any spirit springs across the world. FromSoft added a new mechanic to them to help navigate the more vertical aspects of the base game. 
but for some reason underutilize this feature in the DLC. Most of them are at the Jagged Peak, and there are only a handful outside of that area. They even made it so you need to unlock the springs by finding a set of spirit rocks and destroying them, allowing access to that spring. I feel as though this would have been a massive help and wonderful feeling to be able to go the route the developers wanted us to, then unlocking a massive shortcut for areas above us by using the springs to get around. I know we mainly just fast travel, but it kind of feels like a missed opportunity considering they already added them in the DLC, expanded on the idea, but didn't add enough around the world to feel meaningful in any way. It's kind of a shame. If they added more post launch, that would make me very happy, and especially for first playthroughs for other players. And we're primarily talking about first playthrough in this conversation. Subsequent run-throughs of the DLC make more sense now and I have an idea of where to go, but this entire conversation is from the perspective and lens of post-first playthrough. Legacy dungeons feel great to walk through and progress, and the bosses in the DLC in proper FromSoft fashion are some of the industry's finest. Not all of them, but the important ones are, like I stated in the beginning, larger than life. In terms of the ones that provided the most challenge for myself personally, the Shadow Tree avatar proved to be challenging because it's having three phases you need to learn and how long that fight can go on. And of course, the final boss, which I won't mention, but if you've played the DLC, you know who it is and you know why it's challenging. The first phase, however, is almost actually perfect. It's so close to being an S-tier boss fight phase, it reminds me so much of Slave Knight Gale and Champion Gundyr from Dark Souls 3, which were some of my favorites in that game because it heavily relied on your simple ability to dodge and learn the moveset. But here, the second phase of the final fight is just on the cusp of being too much. Again, to avoid spoilers, I won't get into it, but if you fought him, you know what I mean. Difficulty has been rather a highly contested point of conversation regarding the DLC in general. A few days after the DLC released, it had mixed reviews on Steam. Granted, more than half of the people were complaining about performance issues, which are absolutely valid. Hell, ever since I updated the game to the DLC, I have had new stutters and micro freezes across both the DLC and the base game. I've tried some different options to fix it, but nothing has un unfortunately worked and it's been extremely demoralizing to play when I get killed in a boss fight because the game stops for a full second and I just get whacked to death. But people have been saying the DLC is too hard, and while that was honestly my initial impression after about 10 hours, I think my perspective on the difficulty with the DLC comes from the Shadow Tree fragments and how annoying they are to acquire without being able to keep track of them in the game. Adding a mechanic to scale the DLC outside of the base game is totally fine, and even making it so that you only have so many levels before certain milestones is totally okay. I just wish the game kept track of which ones you collected. Yes, technically you could mark all the ones you pick up with the in-game mark feature, but again, first playthrough you most likely wouldn't have had the foresight to do something like this. So having the game just at the very least hold your hand in collecting the one crucial item that literally dictates how difficult the DLC will be for you would have gone a long way. It's different than the golden seeds because there are more of them in the game you need to max your flask and the flask is for healing. It doesn't make you deal and take less damage. Again, difficulty is such a touchy subject because as the player, you do have more control over it than you think. I just would have loved a way to track fragments collected in the game. That's, that's pretty much it. Performance for the DLC has definitely been all over the place for a lot of people. From my personal experience, it was almost never a solid 60 FPS on PC for a majority of the open world as well as numerous boss fights. On top of that, ever since downloading the update for the DLC, I've had massive issues with upwards of full second freezes and the game quickly trying to play catch up. I heard and even from software have said it's related to third party mouse programs getting in the way, so I did disable the one I use, but I really haven't noticed a huge difference. Maybe if I do a clean install of the game I might notice it more, but again this definitely comes down to your hardware and what's running in the background while you play. I'm not going to knock it because other than the freezes, the performance was solid enough with the exception of the final boss. Again, won't spoil it, but it does have one attack that did tank my FPS down to about 30, which kind of sucked. After I finished the DLC, beat the final boss, and experienced the end of Shadow of the Erd Tree, I felt conflicted, as I kind of do right now. 
Don't get me wrong, the overall package is amazing and worth the $40 that is being asked for. I didn't feel like it was a waste of money in the slightest or that I got scammed. However, something about reflecting on the DLC made me feel like the best response after watching the final cutscene made me go, that's it? I felt as though there were many opportunities to expand on concepts, ideas, and lore from the base game that are noticeably absent from the DLC. Nothing regarding Melina, Godwin, certain affinities or afflictions were kind of ignored, incantations still don't feel like they're powerful enough. There are just these big holes in the DLC that I didn't expect to be there. It feels wrong even mentioning this kind of stuff because the vast majority of people are praising the DLC, and to be fair, I was for a while too. It's almost like sacrilegious to criticize these games, but there's just this gut feeling in me that goes, this wasn't perfect. It's still amazing, but it definitely has its flaws. Now, is it the best From Software DLC? Well, it's a toss up between this and the Old Hunters DLC for Bloodborne. I don't know how I feel on the matter yet. I need to play more of the DLC on other characters with other builds to figure it out. But if someone wanted to make the argument that the Old Hunters is better, I could see it. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the DLC for Elden Ring, but had multiple instances of becoming frustrated with some of the overworld decisions and was left wanting more in some other departments of the game. Not necessarily more content, but more answers to questions we have and filling in some of the gaps that were there from the base game. But if you haven't played the DLC yet and you're considering it, if you enjoyed the base game, you definitely should just buy it. Yeah, it's $40, but you will absolutely get your money's worth and then some. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on the DLC and what your experience was like, and be sure to subscribe for more about video games and expansions that can be a divisive topic depending on what you say and how you convey it. I hope to see you in future ones.